Too often, when people decide to live a digital nomad lifestyle, they decide to just simply wing it and go off on a whim, and they think that's all part of the spontaneity of the lifestyle. But there are some things that sometimes digital nomads don't consider, and I'm going to cover the top six things in this video. And the first one is having enough insurance, and this is very important, particularly having enough health insurance. Because if you get sick or you have an accident, you'll need to get proper treatment, and that can be expensive. And if you're traveling, you're not just a tourist. Then ordinary tourist health insurance may not cover you. So you need to make sure that you are covered for an extended trip. And if you're from a country where healthcare is provided by the government and funded through taxes, like the UK or Canada or somewhere like that, then you may not have needed to consider this before because you just simply take it for granted. You also have to bear in mind that hospitals in some countries may not be up to the standard of those in your home country, and this is particularly true if you're visiting some of the developing countries out there. And so you do need to make sure that any insurance that you have will enable you to be either brought back home. Or brought to another country where they do have an advanced healthcare system, where they do have good hospitals where you can get the proper treatment. Something else you need to bear in mind if you're from the UK is that UK nationals will lose their right to free treatment on the National Health Service if they're out of the country for a certain length of time. So you may need to also take out private medical insurance to cover you when you get back home as well. So that's something that not a lot of people consider until it's too late. You'll need other types of insurance too. For example, you're going to need car insurance if you're going to be driving, and if you don't have a fixed address, then obtaining this can be very difficult. You're also going to need insurance for your possessions. You know, if your laptop gets lost or stolen, then you could be out of business. You're also going to need insurance to cover you against things like cancelled flights or missed ferries or lost bookings and that sort of thing, especially where you've had to pay up front for these and then they're cancelled and the、uh, tour company or the hotel owner just simply shrugs his shoulders and says, "Oh well, too bad." Then you might have to take out insurance to cover you against that. Banking can also be difficult. When you're traveling, and this is something else that digital nomads often don't take into consideration, you can do all your banking over the internet for sure, but you need to tell your bank where you're going in advance, or they might assume something is fraudulent.、Uh, you know, if all of a sudden you're from America, but someone's using your card in France, then they might think that perhaps、uh, a hacker has stolen your details or something like that, and they'll freeze your account. And then you've got to go through all the steps to get it unfrozen. In the meantime, you haven't got any money, so you do need to、uh, take that into consideration. Also, if you're going to use PayPal, PayPal have a habit of freezing or limiting accounts when they're accessed from a different country. So that can be problematic. And if you've ever tried to get in touch with PayPal, you know that they don't make it particularly easy. So you do have to take that into consideration as well. And you also need to bear in mind that PayPal doesn't operate in every country anyway. So you might not be able to pay for things with PayPal in some countries. Now, while the U.S. dollar is the world's reserve currency, and it's usually easy to convert it into other currencies, some countries have foreign exchange controls or currency restrictions, and this could mean a limit on the amount of dollars that you can exchange for their currency. 
or a limit on their currency that you're allowed to change back into dollars when you leave. And in some countries, they won't even let you take the banknotes out of the country. So you can literally lose money because they won't let you take it with you. So you do have to uh, take that into consideration and make sure that you're going to have enough money in a local currency for the duration of your stay. Now, in the Eurozone, the same currency, the Euro, is accepted in more than one country. So if you're going from, say, Ireland to France to Italy, you can use the same currency in all of those different countries. Something else that you need to bear in mind are visas. And when I say visas, I don't mean the credit card type visa. Some countries have a visa waiver or an e-visa program with other countries so that you don't have to apply for a visa in advance. You just simply fill in some details on a website and pay an admin fee. Some countries will issue you a visa on arrival. And other countries don't require a visa at all, just your passport. And this depends, of course, on what arrangement the government of your country has with the country that you intend to visit. However, many countries require you to apply for a visa before you travel. And you may have to visit the country's embassy to apply in person and or attend an interview before a visa is granted. And you have to get there at your own expense. And don't take it personally, but some countries won't let you in if you're from or have previously traveled to a country that they're not on good terms with. So... For example, lots of Arab countries won't let you go to their country if you visited Israel, for example. And are you working or just visiting? Will you need a working visa or a tourist one? Does updating your blog count as work? Well, depends. Some countries will say it does. Some countries will say it doesn't. And then there's tax. You know, Benjamin Franklin said the only two things in life that are certain are death and taxes. And even if you're not in your home country, that doesn't necessarily mean that you won't have to pay tax there. So will you need to pay tax in your home country, the one you're staying in, or both? Now, some countries you're regarded as a resident in that country if you're there for more than a certain number of days, and you may be required to pay their income tax on your worldwide income. It really is quite a minefield out there because every country is different. So it's a good idea to get professional advice before you leave your home country to see exactly what your tax position is going to be. Then, of course, different countries have different systems. For example, you couldn't get this electrical plug into this socket or this plug into this socket. And of course, there are different voltages. In North America, it's generally 110 volts, but in Europe, it's generally 220 volts. And of course, light switches are different. In some countries, it's up for on and down for off. And in others, it's the opposite. And of course, countries drive on different sides of the road. In the US and continental Europe, people drive on the right and cars have the steering wheel on the left. And in countries like the UK and Australia and Indonesia, it's the other way around. People drive on the left and the steering wheel is on the right. And even if you're not driving a car, this can be a big deal. If you're riding a bicycle, you need to make sure you stay on the correct side. Also, even remembering to look in the right way when you're crossing the street, that is something you need to take into consideration. And finally, there are different languages spoken all around the world. Believe it or not, not everybody in the world speaks English. Now, in some countries, it's widely spoken as a second language, and this is particularly true in cities with a relatively young population. 
But in the countryside or off the beaten track, it's a different matter. And of course, some countries use a completely different alphabet, so there's no reference at all. I mean, for example, if you look at this street scene here in Japan,、uh, everything's in Japanese. So unless you happen to understand Japanese, you're not going to have a clue. So if you're going to be spending a long time in a part of the world where you know that a particular language is widely spoken, it Might be a good idea to get some basic tuition before you go there. You know, brush up on your Spanish if you're going to Latin America, for example. So there you go. Six things that most nomads don't consider, but you should do before you start embarking on this type of lifestyle. For more free educational content, visit learnforfree.biz. Content produced and distributed by AllSuperInfo.